blessing of another brand new day to you out there. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in to Sunday School. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the shares. Thank you for all that you do. We really appreciate God in your life and it's our prayers that God will continue to increase and make all grace abound unto you in all spiritual works. And those pending issues, long-standing issues, we pray today that the Lord will resolve them in the name of Jesus. Thank you one more time. And I'm your host for today. I'm Akikunle Akiola. And the topic uh, uh, we have before you on this wonderful day is a continuation of what we started last week last week we started with effective personal evangelism today we'll be looking at digital evangelism digital evangelism and like i always say any class of sunday school you miss is like a treasure that you've thrown away and i know god is going to help us in jesus mighty name without further ado to go into what we have for you today before we go into our outline today let's quickly say this short word of prayer and our prayer is almighty father Please help me to use all available digital and social platforms to evangelize the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray in the name of Jesus Christ that God is going to help us to use all available digital gadgets on all social media platforms so that we can evangelize to God's people in the name of Jesus. Lord, give us the grace, give us the boldness, give us the encouragement. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you one more time for joining us on this wonderful day. Today promises to be a wonderful time. Today promises to be a life-encountering program. As God is going to open our eyes to the realities of his word, to the pages of the scriptures in Jesus' mighty name. Last week, we looked at effective personal evangelism talking about result producing evangelism as to how we can carry out evangelism on a one-to-one -one basis don't forget what the bible says that either when a soul is wise and as many as some people to righteousness are star shining stars forever i will lay the foundation that evangelism talks about to to share the good news to share the gospel that's it to bring glad tidings which actually came from the root word ijalion ijalion talks about preaching the good news and also we can also see that from the root word of angels we talk about angelizo that is to say saints send out not just for sending sake but send out with a message send out to pass a message across and today we'll be looking at digital evangelism now having laid the foundation as to what evangelism is we want to look at digital evangelism how can we evangelize in such a way that we take to advantage internet or we take to advantage the social media platforms logging into them or using our smart devices as a way of reaching to the people in countries that are far away so we want to try and digitalize evangelism in such a way that we want to take advantage of internet and i pray god is going to open our eyes to the realities of his word in the name of jesus christ now our Bible reading for today will be taken from 2 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 14. 2 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 14. The Bible says, For we must need die, and are as water split on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again, neither does God respect any person. Yet does he devise means that is banished be not expelled from him. I'm going to read it again. For we must needs die, and uh, as water spills to the ground, which cannot be gathered up again, neither does God respect any persons, yet does he devise means that is banished, be not expelled from him. Now we want to look at, okay, how can we actually quickly bring these to terms? And I'm just going to quickly lay a foundation to this. We can see in this context we're looking at we can see that the wise woman of the the wise woman of the that is the first person we can see and we can see king david also coming into play and we can see joab also coming into place and from what happened before this event is that absalom actually killed his brother his stepbrother and because he did that he had to run away and he was banished from the place because the people sought to kill him and now joab was not in the place that is so comforted that how can the king be sitting on his throne and his son is banished his son is somewhere though the boy is actually grieved 
and we can actually see this as a message of reconciliation of that one that has been banished because of the offense he committed and to the father the loving father and we can see the place of the holy spirit and we can see the place of the wise woman of Tequa actually coming in the place as to mediate between king david and that of his banished son and now how do we bring that into terms today we can see the bible says for the wages of sin is dead and all soul that sinneth must die the wages of sin is what is death and the consequence of going against the law of sinning is death and we can see that in the case example of adam when Ada fell from grace, there was a death in place. There was spiritual death in place. And now there is one thing about our God. Because our God is a just God. Because God is a just God. God is not going to say, because he's a just God, say, okay, justice will not be, be in place. However, God actually fulfilled the role of justice. And I actually put some things down here. The wise woman, we can say she is typical to Jesus Christ. David is just like God. And Absalom is like the sinner. And we have the place of the Holy Spirit, which actually talks about the place of Joab. Joab is that person that actually spoke, that nurtured that woman, that go to King David. His son is away. He has committed the sin. But the, it is of the will of God that nobody should perish. However, God wants to bring us back to himself. And how can God actually bring us back to his place? Because he needs somebody to come and stand in, in the gap. To take away the sin of the world. To, take, to carry on himself the sin of the world. And see, let's quickly go there. Let's quickly go to what I actually put here. He said, for we must need die. This talks about the message of reconciliation. The event of death must definitely take place. And there is no turning back. Death must take place because a sin has been co committed. He says, yet does it divided means that his banished be not expelled from him. God finds a way of actually bringing us back. And the only way he did that is by Jesus Christ. He has brought Jesus Christ to the scene so that Jesus Christ can, come, can go in the form of that extreme. Jesus Christ took our sin on himself so that he can do words. He can give us his eternal life. God in his infinite mercies reconciles us back to himself by satisfying the justice. God is not actually saying there is no justice. But he satisfied the place of justice in Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ actually going to the cross to die for each and every one of us. So that he can bring us back like that of Absalom. He can bring us back to himself. Jesus stood in the gap and died on the cross of Calvary so as it can take away our sin and that's what the wise woman of Tekoa actually said her king david i know something has actually gone wrong but we don't need to go like that you love your son how can we bring back that son and gave the king and the king said okay because of this you have said nobody's going to come to kill that's your son not even a, a, a strength of air is going to fall off from his head and we can see there's another law that also came into play here there is another law and that law is so important that they, 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 they reverence that law and that is the law of the avenger of blood if anybody kills anybody the law actually comes into play that is the avenger of blood that has come to come and take the life of the person who has actually committed the sin because when you commit the sin the, the, the penalty of the sin is death and there is another provision that, that, that has been made a reality unto us. According to Numbers chapter 35, verse 9 to 34, talks about the city of refuge. If the avenger of blood have come to seek an occasion about somebody or somebody that has done evil and have committed the sin and the reward is by death, if that person can find himself in the city of refuge, such a soul is saved such a soul is saved we see at that city of refuge today that god has put in place for as many people that the consequence of their sin should be punishable by death by death by that separation the city of refuge is still available for them to come in but how do you run away from that avenger of blood that wants to seek a location on you the avenger of blood is typical to the devil because you have sinned 
is always standing there and saying that this man must go and die because he has committed the sin god even respect the law that's the reason why he brought jesus christ into the sin so that he can take away the sin of this world that to say the avenger of blood is going to take out an occasion on jesus christ to take the life of jesus christ so that he can give us the life of god so that we when we get to the city of refuge we can say my life has actually been exchanged with the life of jesus because the avenger of blood has taken the blood of jesus christ and my blood is free i am reconciled back unto god because of jesus christ now in the world we live in today we can see some people have been banished by virtue of their sin and god is there the city of refuge is made available and the avenger of blood is after them what is your responsibility what is my responsibility as that of joab and the woman of tequa the wise woman of tequa our own assignment is to actually bridge that gap and make sure that we reconcile people back unto god we need to reconcile people back unto god and then what are the means in which we can use to reconcile people back unto god joab used the wise woman huh, in tequa what are we to use today we are to use digital evangelism as a way of actually reconciling god's people back unto god we are bringing the message of reconciliation and the strategy we want to use today is to use digital evangelism we are bringing back people that have gone into the world we are bringing them back preaching the message of reconciliation that jesus christ has paid the ultimate sacrifice on the cross the avenger of blood cannot take their lives again jesus christ has paid the sacrifice all they need to do is to accept the sacrifice of our lord jesus christ by coming into the city of refuge how do we get that across to them by digital evangelism digital evangelism digital evangelism is the way we need to reach out to them and make them understand your life is not going to be taken away the avenger of blood has taken the life of jesus christ now all you have to do is enjoy the life of jesus christ by just believing that the avenger of blood will never take an occasion against you in jesus mighty name amen and amen and amen in jesus mighty name our lesson introduction today says as of january 2020 the the world population stood at 7.75 billion smart mobile phone users at about 5.19 billion internet users 4.5 billion and active social media users 3.8 billion statistics also shows that every minute about a million people log into facebook 3.8 million searches are made on google 4.5 million videos are viewed on youtube and 347,000 users scroll on instagram the bible is clear that anyone who has a personal encounter with jesus is called to be his witness according to mark chapter 16 verse 14 to 15 an act of apostle chapter 1 and verse 8 which is the emergence of the new digital technologies and internet and social media platforms digital evangelism is an effective means of reaching the world with the gospel of our lord jesus christ uh, joab actually reached david using the wise woman of the to pass across the message of reconciliation today we have come with another means in which we can use there are people in pakistan there are people that are far away but with what we are doing here today they can can be reached using the social media platform using internet to our advantage now the population of the world as of today sits at 7.87 billion people we have active smart mobile phone users sitting at 6.648 billion ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. internet users at 4.66 billion social media users at 4.62 billion on facebook per minute now let's look at 1.93 billion active users go on to facebook every month 1.93 billion every month they're on facebook now 890 million people log on to facebook every day so that message can reach 893 million people what needs to be done is that once you do the upload people will just share and it's going to go across because statistics also shows that 21 minutes is what an average person spends on facebook every day average in the whole world 21 minutes is the average time spent on facebook and 243,055 pictures per minute on facebook 243,000 pictures 
go on Facebook every minute. So even if it's the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, you do your part, I do my part, and we put it there. We are part of these 243,000 people. I tell you, somebody will see you today and say, oh my goodness, God. Jesus Christ is the way to the Father. And I pray God is going to help us in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says something that is so profound. Something that is so profound in Mark chapter 16, verse 14 to 15. It says, Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which said they had seen him after he was risen and he said unto them go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature the bible is saying to us today that we need to go ye all out into the world to preach the gospel to every creature whether old whether young whether fat whether slim irrespective of the ageism and the classism and all the isms we've put in place irrespective of the country of nationality our assignment is to go and preach the gospel to the old world we need to preach the gospel to the old world every soul must be saved the bible says but you shall receive power after the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be what you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and to the uttermost part of the heart it talks about our assignment goes to the uttermost part of the heart but this can be done after we've been filled with the holy ghost because we need the power of god we need that ability we need that dynamis. we need it to go and carry out the assignment and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils because in the field you're going to you will encounter the devil but you need the power you need the endowment of the holy ghost uh, from on high so that it's going to empower you to do the work that is committed into your hands Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and you shall receive the power after the, the holy ghost uh, is come upon you and uh, the result of the power that you have received is so that you can be witnesses uh, we are witnesses for god we are witnesses for christ we are witnessing Jesus Christ came into this world to carry out the assignment that his father has actually committed into his hands so that nobody will be lost, uh, so that every lost sheep can be brought back into the fold, that everybody can be brought back. It brought back the message of reconciliation. It brought the message of reconciliation so that all men can be reconciled back unto God. Because when God created us in the beginning, he created us for fellowship. He said he wants his people to be with him and to be like him. And now something actually went wrong, just like Absalom. That ran away because of the sin he committed thank god for reconciliation and we have brought the message of reconciliation today in the name of jesus and the message of reconciliation today that we brought we're going to and we are going to use the social media platform we are going to use digital evangelism however that is not also underplaying the role of we gathering together as brethren gathering together to fellowship we are saying we want to use this means to reach out to the people but the end result is for them to come and we can dine together we can come together we are not saying because of the social media age today people are not to go to church again people are not supposed to gather together that's not what we are saying we are saying what we want to do today is to use digital evangelism as a way of reaching out to the people so that we can come back together and god is going to help us in jesus mighty name let's go on to our first break we'll be right back with more for you still on our topic today digital evangelism god bless you as you stay with us Welcome back from the break and if you just join us you tune into Sunday school on our topic today digital evangelism and this is the time of the program where we go into a Bible reading a Bible reading will be taken from Hebrews chapter 10 verse 21 to 24 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 21 to 24 the Bible says and having an high priest over the house of God let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works now 
to look at this the foundation laid here is that we have an high priest over the house of god we have an high priest and we can see jesus christ is the high priest is the high priest over the house of god and it's saying because we have an high priest we now need to draw near with a true heart we need to be open in our approach we need to do what we need to draw with a pure heart having the full assurance of faith and they say it is also high time we put away evil conscience evil conscience is actually a prompting by the enemies saying to you that you can never be saved your sin is grievous this is what and what you've done don't forget jesus christ is the high priest seated at the right hand of god making intercessions for us making intercessions for us appealing before god father have mercy on your people lord have mercy on your people the job of the high priest is to go and atone for the sins of the people before god so that god can forgive men of their sins we have an high priest over the house of god however our own assignment is to purge ourselves of evil conscience now let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering the moment you say lord i've given my life to jesus please take my life turn my life break me mold me and use me for your goal it says now it is time for you to hold fast to your profession of faith in the wavering is like a seed that is tossed to and fro however we need to be firm in our approach with god the moment we say lord i do the bible says he that put his hand on the plow and look at back is not fit for the kingdom of god hence we need to hold fast our profession of faith without wavering no 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 it is not time for us to waver however we are supposed to do what to hold fast to our profession of faith because god is faithful that he has promised and god is going to help us in jesus mighty name and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good work if there's anything i need to do you to you is to provoke you to the good works bring you up in the way of the lord provoke you unto good works so that we all can do what we all can bring people back by just preaching our word the holy spirit is the one that convicts people of their sin ours is just to open our mouth propagate the gospel of our lord jesus christ we have to lesson outlines today the first one says the biblical views of digital evangelism and the second one is optimizing the digital world for evangelism and discipleship now let's quickly look at biblical views of digital evangelism ah yeah yeah yeah, yeah. father lord we thank you for today now jesus christ during his days how did it evangelize what are the tools that he used to his own advantage so that he could reach out unto the people that is what we want to look at and now we're going to bring it into context we're going to bring it into this present day as to the things we can do so that we can reach out to god's people now the first one says it is the strategic and deliberate use of internet and social media platforms to preach the gospel so we have to be intentional about our approach as to reaching out to the people i am on my social media i am on whatever platform what am i doing am i preaching the good news somebody is going to read your text today and the holy spirit is going to do the conviction we are not there to go and post whatever people are actually posting people are doing different things on social media but how can we as the sons and the daughters of god take advantage of this social media so that we can preach the gospel of our lord jesus christ some people can flaunt whatever it is they want to flaunt but the only thing we can flaunt on social media is the gospel of our lord jesus christ so that we can reach out to the unreached so we have to be deliberate about our use we have to be intentional about it now let's look at some communication gadget that is available to us we have smartphones we have tablets we have ipad pros we have our laptops we have all these gadgets that are there for us it's just for us to open an account and start doing what we make friends because the truth of the matter is the moment you get onto some social media platform they are going to suggest some friends to you it's just for you to have them let them follow you so that whatever you're doing they can get there now the bible describes various means adopted by our lord jesus christ and the apostles to reach their audience identify them in the following passages now let's look at what the bible says luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 3 the bible says and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of god 
he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and he prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. Jesus Christ took advantage of the sheep. Jesus Christ saw the sheep that was just idle. That thing was idle. And the people needed to hear the word of God. People are there that want to hear the word of God. But how to get the genuine word of God? Because we know that so many things are out there. You and I that we have the light of the word. We are the city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. We have the true gospel. We need to do what? We need to make people hear the word of God. And using social media platform is what we are looking at today. Jesus Christ saw that ship and he entered and said, please trust for that. That talks about platform. That talks about visibility so that people can actually see what you are doing today. You can be like Peter that you will trust the ship so that people can see. And it can be your, a means of you actually sharing what you're hearing today. Just your like on it. Just your comment on it. You're actually trusting so that people can actually read. When you share on your own page, it means that you're giving connection to people that are on your own profile to be able to see this message. I want to thank you for all that you've done so far. For the likes, for the comments, for the shares, for all that you've done and what you're going to do i say god is going to give you the reward because the bible makes us to know that there is either planted either watering but god give it increase and all men whether you share whether you like whether you comment you have your own reward peter did what he trusted that ship for jesus so that they can reach so that there can be visibility so that people can hear and they can see the message of our lord jesus christ the bible in matthew chapter 5 verse 1 to 2 says and seeing the multitude he went up into a mountain and when he was set his disciples came unto him he opened his mouth and taught them so we can see jesus christ also went to the mountain that also talks about visibility when you go up high people down there can see you and they can hear what you have to say jesus christ used the ship and he used that of the mountain we have this message coming out today how can you also help this message reach out to the people how can you actually use your platform also not only this message we have people of god we have men of god like our father and the lord pastor e. A. Adeboye. just a little share of his snippets just a little share of his message even if it is what god is also doing in your life put it out there let people also share what the lord has given to you to his people you never can say who is going to read that and you never can say who that message is going to transform because that message of one minute that you are going to put there that god has laid in your heart is going to give hope to somebody that is about to commit suicide don't stop the word of god in your life put the word of god in your life because we are co-laborers together it is not about me it is not about the big pastors that we know what about you because it is given to each and every one of us to go out and propagate the gospel i understand that we'll have various platforms but the platform that god has given to you please utilize it for the gospel and i pray god is going to help us in jesus mighty name apostle paul used handwriting that is a form of text message in those days we don't have smartphones the only thing is ink and paper and they will put it down and send it to the people but today we have our smartphones here that i can type a message and the person in the states today the person in canada is going to receive my message just like this even we have whatsapps even we have whatsapp messenger i send it now now in the sneak of time you get the message use that as well the bible in colossians chapter 4 verse 18 says the salutation by the hand of me paul remember my bones grace be unto you he wrote with his handwriting and sent to the people god is going to help us in jesus mighty name in jesus mighty name amen now we want to mention also another strategy apostle paul adopted or the three conditions he subjected himself to to win others to christ according to first corinthians chapter 9 verse 21 to 23 first corinthians chapter 9 verse 21 to 23 the bible says to them that are without the law as without the law be not without the law to god but under the law to christ that i might gain them that are without the law to the weak became i weak that i might gain the weak i am made all things to all men 
that I might by all the ways save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be a partaker thereof with you. To the weak, I am weak. To the Galatians, I have become a Galatian. To the South African, I have become a South African. To the Nigerians, I am a Nigerian. To the Zimbabweans, I am a Zimbabwean. To the British, I become a British. To the people, the, the Canadians, I am become a Canadian. To the Romans, I am become a Roman. The Bible says there is no difference. It says to these people, I am become them, understanding their culture, understanding their ways, and also taking the message to them. But don't forget, our assignment is to reach the word for Christ. One man cannot reach the word. I'm going to play my part. You please play your part in your environment, in your local environment. You have a part to play. You need to influence your word to Christ. Apostle Paul said, to all men, I am become everything to all men, so that I can win them to Christ. If it is learning the language, you learn the language. Learn everything so that you can communicate effectively to them. Apostle Paul became everything to everybody so that he can win them. It's not discriminating. You are this, you are black, you are white, you are Hindu. No! I want to win them. I become weak so that I can do what? I can win them. And God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Look at the devil. When the devil wants to get somebody, the devil will pretend to be part of them so that he can get to them, so that he can win them. And that's the reason why we have to be careful as to the people that we allow. Some will pretend to be part of us, but they are not part of us. They have only come to pretend that they are part of us so that they can infiltrate and get into us and so that they can look for the weaklings and remove the weaklings. I pray we will not be caught unguarded in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, to add on to what we've said, it is also very good for us to actually identify the communication devices at our disposal so that we can win souls. We need to fulfill Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, which says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Jesus Christ is with us to the end of the world. However, we need to go what we need to go. It's a commandment and a commission that has been given to us so that we can win all souls unto Christ. Lo, I have commanded you. And I'm, God is saying he's going to be with us. And I pray God is going to open our eyes to that that we have god has given each and every one of us a platform what are you doing with the platform god has given to you to reach out even if it is just john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him if that is what you're just going to do on your status today please do it somebody is going to see it and the holy spirit is going to nudge the heart of such a person to believe Please, it's our assignment. It is a collective assignment because we are co-laborers in God's vineyard. God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go on to this break. We'll be right back with more for you. Still on our topic today, digital evangelism. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back from the break and if you're just joining us, you're tuning into Sunday School on our topic today, Digital Evangelism. And this is the time of the program where we go into our second outline. Our second outline is optimizing the digital world for evangelism and discipleship. Optimizing the digital world for evangelism and discipleship. Optimizing talks about to make the best effective use so that we can get results. So that we can get results. We want to make the best use, effective use of what we have at our disposal which is the digital world in which we have today we have to optimize this world using our gadgets so that we can get the result for evangelism and to also make disciples now all communities can be reached through social media sites and platforms the an environment can be hostile 
but I promise you based on the statistics that we looked at people say go on to social media platforms and by also putting it on social media platforms I say to you you can reach out to them and they can also reach out to you and say how can I go about this God is gonna help us old friends can be reconnected through media groups such as whatsapp groups and broadcasts. we can see your old friends the we can social media is a tool that God has given to us. It's just that some people are using it to the other side. If people are using it to the other side, why can't we use it to the positive side? Church, it's time for us to wake up. I'm not saying that we should neglect the gatherings of the brethren. I'm not saying we should not come to church again because we have social media platforms. But what I'm saying is the people that are unreached, let us reach them. We can now connect them to a local assembly within their reach. The world can be reached through creative visual content. We can all be content creators and publishers. Now, this is very important. There's one thing I always see. Everything that we need for the propagation of the gospel is within our reach. Somebody is the finger. Somebody is the nose. Somebody is the teeth. Somebody is the tongue. Somebody is the lip. It talks about you. Somebody you are very good at writing. Somebody, you are so good with imagining things, creativity at the highest level. Somebody is good at bring your idea. The person can put it down. The person can make a graphical presentation of it. We all have something that God has put on the inside of us. Somebody is behind the camera. I am here. Somebody is going to do the editing. Somebody is going to do the upload. There is something that you have. There is something. But let us come together as co-laborers. And do what? If you can write, please start writing tracts. If you are a content producer, ah, yeah, 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 please produce the content. If you are a presenter, please come and present the gospel. If you are a cameraman, please come and do it. We all have our role that we need to do. And God is going to give credit to everybody, everybody, everybody that have done something, that have participated. God is going to give reward. Now, please do something. So that we all can propagate the gospel. Online Sunday services, revival programs, teaching and seminars are now in vogue. There are veritable means of preaching the gospel to the near and to the far. We have ways whereby we can do what? We can preach the gospel. We can preach the gospel to everyone. Please let us do our own part. Let us do our own part. The only thing that is so prevailing in the world that we live in today that is trending is what online services revival programs and the things like that i know the number of meetings i get to on zoom every week and and that should not even take away our physical gathering i'm still reiterating that that should not take it away this is in vogue and we want to thank god for the movement because it is a movement but we need to also take advantage of everything that we have. The end result is so that we can come together and gather. I can say to you the number of people that might want to say they want to meet with our Father in the Lord because they are listening to him, they don't have the opportunity. But our Father in the Lord has multiplied himself or duplicated himself. In pastors, we have redeemed parishes all around the world. Go there. Then we can now do adequate follow-up. We can do follow-up. We can do follow-up. The first one in digital evangelism is for us to reach out. But it doesn't end there. We need to do follow-up. And we now go to one-on-one -on -one personal and effective evangelism. And I pray God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Our summary to this is digital evangelism is cost-efficient and effective. Digital evangelism should be incorporated with traditional forms of evangelism. So we are not saying because we have digital evangelism, we are going to do it with one-on-one. -on -one no one on one is still needed but we had it on it does not replace traditional methods as one on one mass tract evangelism and etc so we see it is just to add on it's just to add on it's just to add on we have some countries today that plane can only land there once in a week and christians there are so few we can use this digital evangelism to reach out unto them until we we'll find somebody that we're going to send into the mission field and i pray god is going to help us in jesus name let's say father father please open the eyes of your children to make use of available technological opportunities to reach out for christ in jesus name it is the season of reaching out for christ lord open our eyes oh god so that we can take advantage of the technological opportunities in the name of jesus christ lord help us today in jesus name amen and amen in jesus mighty name. father lord
lord we want to thank you for your word today your word has come expressly unto us we've seen the story of joab absalom the woman, wise woman of tekoa and king david how the message of reconciliation is brought in place jesus christ has died for us and we want to take charge of the digital world to evangelize lord give us the grace and the boldness to do this as a people because we are called laborers in the name of jesus daddy we want to thank you god we thank you because it is done you are the covenant keeping god have your way oh god and the world will be reached for you in jesus mighty name amen and amen amen in jesus name thank you for joining us on this wonderful day and i believe you'll be blessed in the mighty way please don't stop play your part as i'm going to play my part and we all will play our part and god will be exalted souls will be won in jesus mighty name i pray for you today the lines will continue to fall on you in pleasant places you will never know a better yesterday higher and higher and higher you will go in jesus mighty name don't forget to like don't forget to share don't forget to comment the lines will fall on you in pleasant places in jesus name god bless you